，英，我们的孩子呢？这是唯一可以侵占的办法。阿、啊、慧，阿、啊、慧，阿、啊、不可以命令你。英、啊，你欠多少次我帮你还多少次，现在连躲到雷女儿都卖了，我真的无药可救你。孩子，孩子，孩子，我们来聊聊。我为什么有这样的老婆？你根本不会当个妈妈。我们都不够牵引我们俩，怎么能够打包你？两万块，我一定会出。好，谢谢吧。This story was inspired by a story I heard. Yeah, so it's about a father who had to buy back his daughter. After buying back his daughter, getting back the daughter, right? He was still gracious enough to went out to look for the wife to take care of the family because he believed like in like the family is not complete without the mother, lah. So when I heard this story, I was like deeply moved by his intentions and decided to pitch it to the lecturers. The difficulties that I experience with the story is that, uh, first of all, the era. Well, I'm not born in the era, so coming up with uh, relevant plot points in the era was difficult, and it requires a lot of researching. A lot of research went into finding the exact things that we needed for our shoot. The most difficult prop that we had to find was the payment voucher. We didn't know exactly how a payment voucher would look like in the 80s. So um, we had to actually ask people who loaned from the loan sharks and from their previous experiences, what did they get? And actually, um, the payment voucher is not supposed to be red, but because Ing Huat's house was very dull and of neutral colour, so we had to get something that stood out, thus the red colour. The most difficult uh, location that I had to find was the house. This whole story is set in 1980s, so I had to call HDB to ask like, oh, so which are the houses that are not renovated, which areas that we have to find. We even went to the extent of like giving out flyers and go door to door knock from like east to west of Singapore. So we came across this house in Red Hill that's very suitable. We went ahead with the owner and he's very open about it. But however, like he backed out like two weeks before our shoot, which caused quite a panic to me. Ah. So thankfully, through connection, I got a house at Circuit Road. So basically, we tried to colour code each of our characters. Like for example, Asiang was more of the reds and Ying was more of the greens, which represent that she's money-minded. For Ying Huat, it was neutral colours, like the earthy tones, because we want to show that he's a very normal and average kind of guy. During wardrobe sourcing, um, I kept an eye out for where I could find my wardrobe. La. After exhausting like places like Coven, Chinatown and Little India, we were hitting like this block la, as to where we could source for vintage stuff. And I asked the stylist where I could find them. So, she mentioned that we could try the Salvation Army all the way in Woodlands. <laughs> I was in Bukit Mera, but yeah. And then I went there and it turned out they renovated the place. And there were only three racks of clothes there. It wasn't easy to find like vintage patterned clothes. I could only start sourcing when our cast was confirmed. So actually, generally, we did that last while I helped Aira with the props first. Okay, so during auditions, um well, it was definitely quite a tedious process because we had quite a number of people coming in. Um, yeah, but ultimately, we managed to secure our main lead, male lead, which was Elvis Chin, and he is actually a Malaysian. So what happened there was one of our group members actually came across this short film that he was in. So I contacted him via Facebook and he thankfully was very willing to be on board this project. As for our female lead, it was quite uh, a long process to try and find someone who was suitable. As I started getting desperate, I just like emailed a bunch of people, one of them being Mediacorp. So Fiona, which is Michelle's manager, um, said that, okay, hey, why not you audition her, see where it goes, see if you like her or not. And 
Yeah, so that's what we did. We auditioned her and yeah, everything went well. We subsequently managed to secure her after quite some time talking and discussing the details with Fiona. For the character of Asyang, we actually got him through Sunny Pang's stunt team. So we were coordinating with Sunny Pang and his stunt troupe to help us choreograph our final fight scene. We actually went down to his workshop and um, from there, we saw that Jameson, he was very suitable to play this character and we secured him while we were at the workshop. One of the workflow is Dutch Anger that I play with it throughout the film that you can see. Initially, the beginning stage of my Dutch Anger is mainly on emphasising on bad guys. Dutch, tilted, so they are tilted, you get what I mean? Subsequently, after throughout the 10 days overnight shoot, it began very often, Dutch left, Dutch right, Dutch left, Dutch right. It's just to create the frame, like to frame up nicely. Cause sometimes it feels like straight shot is too straight and doesn't have any emotion. During the production itself, I think uh, with, for me especially, I think was, which was the most difficult was the early scene because we had two situations that are happening and in that scene. Lah. So basically one of them was uh, a group of people uh, gambling and then there's Eng Huat being chased down. So to actually light up both situations simultaneously, it was quite a challenge for me. But with the help of my friends and my group members, I think we actually pulled it through together. There are actually few scenes that I actually enjoyed. Um, one would be uh, ASEAN's gambling office, where I actually played with uh, T5 tubes and also practicals. Why it's my favourite scene is because I actually get to build up the mood and feel of that scene from scratch. The scene that I enjoy the most is actually the toilet scene itself, which is a big accomplishment without using any lights. I think our dreams, our inspiration has become bigger and bigger each day when we're trying to film this scene. But actually, to think twice again, you can use whatever practical source in the toilet itself to shoot a nice scene and also feels like it's actually, oh, it was littered well. Due to the time constraint and the way we shoot, it's actually like a feature style. Sadly to say, it was removed lah. During production, there are some like in exciting incidents that we well, went through together. Like all of us have to endure 10 days of overnight shoot. So in order for us not to sleep on set, we make fun of each other. <laughs> I think of like <laughs> pasting tape on <laughs> on our producer eye to make her stay awake. So for post-production, I did a very rough edit at first, which I lay all the, all the clips that is needed in. And because the whole edit, the whole rough edit was about one hour, a lot of scenes were cut. And some of the scenes that we really liked was also removed. How I found the song Let the Night Gently Fall is since our era is in the 1980s, I went to search songs that we can find based in Singapore. There's a song called Sin Yao, like made by like local Singaporeans themselves in like the 1980s. So when I showed the director, Grace, she chose that song, uh, that particular song, because she said, she said it fits the whole um, film. The most enjoyable part of the whole process during production is actually um, the foley's because my boom operator Jackson Ho, <laughs> he he was the one that helped me with like uh, foley sounds like Ian gets like choked at the at the wall right like he would do the foley for me uh, like part where Ian Hua falls on the floor is struggling and then he will like go he's like willing to go to the floor and like struggle for me so yeah that's the the most <laughs> fun part. <laughs> Doing the foley is actually like recreating the sounds. For um, the role of baby Grace, initially we had one baby but we figured that we couldn't use her anymore because by the time we reached the point that we needed to use her, she was too grown up and we couldn't. So we found a new baby through Grace's contact. Like her friend just gave birth and like just nice during post-production we can shoot the baby in the studio, which is a safer place for the baby. For the pickup baby shoot, you cannot actually shoot that wide because we are shooting in this studio over here and we cannot even shoot this close because we are filming it in a bigger cinema screen. So technically, we have to frame just nice in the middle range of the focal length which is like around 50, which reach until the size over here. So when we preview it, it actually looks pretty normal. The problem that we encounter is actually the green fluorescent tube from the location itself. 
as we do not have the equipment that we actually rented out at the first place. We had to use the lights that are there for us, provided by the school. So it was a challenge as certain lightings are more harder to accomplish than the others, especially when there's a green team, which I do not have the gel or the resource to do it. So that kind of lighting we actually have to improvise uh, during uh, post-production. I would say it was a joy working with this bunch. They really taught me a lot on how to be professional on set. I think I've been very lucky to be in this team of very experienced and very smart people. <laughs> through this like one whole year that we've been through everything together, yeah, actually we bonded quite a lot and I learned quite a lot from them. It was a hard journey uh, for everyone. For post-production, even though there's like downside, I learned how to persevere and complete the stuff that I needed to do. Okay, throughout this whole production, I enjoy myself as I get to do what I love most, which is to do lighting. Uh, to my group of members that I've been working with throughout the uh, year, uh, I wish them all the best and hope to also work with them soon in the industry. I think I'm just very thankful for these other eight group members. Yeah, because initially I didn't even believe in this story. But in the end when I pitched this story to these eight people, they were like, oh, actually I can see it, Grace. And I think that really changed my mind and then told the lecturers that we wanted to do this story. La. It wasn't I wanted to do the story, but it became we. Don't you hate